Hey everybody. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Hello. 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 Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about becoming a tattoo artist and what you should know if you want to become one. So stay tuned. So I'm going to say a couple things before I start. Your success in tattooing is dependent on you. Not the shop owner, not the artist around you, not your mentor, nobody but you. You have to put in the work. You have to market yourself. You have to come up with new and inventive ways to set yourself apart from everyone else. So don't think any of this is just going to be handed to you because it's not. It's a long road and you have to put in a lot of work. So remember that. Also, tattooing is not just all glitz and glamour. It's a lot of stress, anxiety, and frustration. So if you expect just to like cruise into a shop and turn into this tattoo artist, reality show rock star, you are sadly mistaken. That is not what tattooing is about. Unfortunately, reality TV has kind of warped everybody's perception on what a tattoo artist acts like and what a tattoo shop's environment is like. So just know anything that you've seen on TV about tattooing is probably wrong. And if a tattoo shop is anything like you've seen on TV in any of those reality shows, you should run. So that being said, my name is Tyler. I'm going to talk to you about what it takes to become a tattoo artist. So everybody's journey to become a tattoo artist can be a little bit different. So just know what I'm going to say here is going to be like a general outline on what you should expect, but it might not be exactly like this. So if you get like six months into your apprenticeship and something is different than I described in this video, don't come back here yelling at me. This is just a general outlook on what you should expect. So first thing I would recommend having an artistic background, whether you're a painter, if you draw, if you do digital art, whatever it is, you must have a creative eye because your job will be drawing on people for a living. And no, you don't have to know how to draw everything. You don't have to be like a hyper-realistic pencil artist in order to become a tattoo artist. You do need to have an artistic eye and you do need to have a steady hand. Can't be all shaky and learn to tattoo. So that is step number one. So once you have figured out if you are artistic or not, you need to build a very strong portfolio. Going into a shop and asking for an apprenticeship without a portfolio will get you nowhere. You need to be able to show that you understand what you're doing artistically in order for them to take the risk and say, hey, yeah, come on as an apprentice. A portfolio is not just a notebook filled with sketches. You need to truly show what you are able to do. So if you paint, you can take pictures of your paintings, print them out, and put them in a nice book. If you draw on an iPad, you're able to bring in your iPad and show them everything. But try to make it as professional as possible. Make it a good presentation so you make a good impression to show them that you are serious about what you do and that you will take your apprenticeship seriously. Oh, really quick, I want to mention, I do have these shirts for sale. They are limited edition and they will not be available for long. If you want one of them, go check out the link in the description. And if you are watching this video a year from now and these shirts are no longer available, I will replace the link to these shirts with my clothing store link so you can go check that out too. Back to the video. So once you have built a portfolio, it's time for you to find a mentor. Now, how do you find a mentor? If you have friends that have tattoos and they look really good, you can ask them where they got them. You can go on Google, you can go on Instagram, just search out a good tattoo shop or a specific artist that you like their style and seek them out. Apprenticeships are not just like getting a job at Lowe's. You don't just go in and say, are you hiring? I mean, you can, but sometimes it's a little bit more complicated than that. What I would recommend is once you've found the shop or the artist that you you want to apprentice under, set up an appointment, get a tattoo yourself, and while you're getting tattooed, feel out the atmosphere. Try to see if you think you would be a good fit at that shop. Not all tattoo artists are opening to talk and chit chat while they're tattooing, but if your artist is chatty and you guys have an open conversation about art, you can mention that you've been interested in tattooing. You can show them some of your work. Don't come on too strong because a lot of times people will just shut you right down. I recommend developing a relationship with an artist or artists at a shop. Hang around there for a while, get to know them, and maybe eventually they will offer you an apprenticeship or you'll feel comfortable enough to where you think you have an open relationship with them enough to where you can ask, hey, are you guys looking for an apprentice? So that's one way to approach it. The other way to approach it is some shops will post online that they're looking for an apprentice. You can look out for postings like that. And whatever the application process is that they have, you can go through, send them your portfolio, or you go in for a consultation with them. Getting an apprenticeship is not a very cut and dry thing. There's many different ways that you can get one, and none of them really is the right way. It just depends on the artist. This is probably one of the trickiest parts of becoming a tattoo artist, so don't get discouraged if you don't find a mentor or right away, continue to search, and maybe you'll find one. Now, some people will say, well, why are artists so stingy? Why don't they just bring on apprentices all the time? Well, you have to understand for me to take on an apprentice, first of all, it's a huge risk having somebody new come in that has no idea what they're doing. We're dealing with bloodborne pathogens and a permanent mark on someone's skin. So you coming into my shop is opening up my shop for the public to possibly look at my shop negatively. And number two, this is a huge investment on my part, taking a ton of my time to explain years of learning to someone. So if I take somebody on and they're around for a couple months, maybe a year and they don't take it seriously and end up leaving, then that was a complete waste of time for me when I could have either been making more money doing something else or I could have been spending that time with my family. So keep that in mind. If somebody just says no off the bat, it's not that they're just being a jerk. It's this is a huge undertaking for the artist that you're asking to apprentice you. So congratulations, you got your apprenticeship. For the next couple months to a year or more, you're going to be cleaning the shop, going to the store for everybody in the shop, setting up and breaking down stations, scrubbing tubes and learning how to use the autoclave, scrubbing the bathrooms and taking verbal abuse.
tattoos from your mentor and everybody else in the shop before you even get to touch the tattoo machine. Now everywhere in the world is different. Even in the United States, state to state, there are different regulations and the different kind of certifications that you might need to get in order to qualify to the state in order to become a tattoo artist. So I'm not gonna go over any type of certifications that you may need. That's something that you'll need to go over with your mentor. So moving forward to when you finally get your first tattoo machine, you get your first setup. The first thing that you're probably gonna do is tattoo yourself. Then once you've tattooed yourself, you're gonna tattoo friends or people that your mentor has advertised to and said, hey, I have an apprentice. This person will do free tattoos for you. They need to practice. Now. This is a very stressful time. It's very frustrating because skin is nothing like you've ever worked with before. If you're really good at drawing on paper, that really doesn't have anything to do with what you're about to do. So be patient and know that everybody else goes through this stage. Just soak in as much information as you can and maybe you'll do good. So after a while of tattooing yourself, tattooing your friends, and random people for free, most likely you will become the walk-in artist at that shop. What that means is you're just gonna sit there all day and wait for people to walk in the shop to get small to medium-sized tattoos. You'll meet with them, they'll tell you the design that they want, you'll tell them a price. A lot of times they'll bargain with you. You'll cave and sell yourself short because you don't wanna lose a client. But after a couple times of losing the battle of haggling with the walk-in customer, you'll start to stay firm with your prices and understand how to deal with the public and how cheap they can be. You could be a walk-in artist for your entire career if you want. Doing walk-ins is different every day. You never really know what you're walking into and some people like doing walk-ins. Personally, I was never a fan of walk-ins and that is why I moved on to an appointment only schedule. So after a while of doing walk-ins and marketing yourself, most likely you will grow a regular clientele and as you do that, you'll be able to schedule appointments. And if you do it right, after a while, you're not gonna have any time for walk-ins and you'll start to work by appointment only. Now this is nice because I know that tomorrow I have two tattoos and tonight I have to draw for both of them and then I'm done worrying about work until tomorrow when I get there for my appointment. For me, this is nice because if I don't have a tattoo till 4 p.m., I don't go to work till about 3.15. But opposed to if I was doing walk-ins and the shop opens at 12, I might be sitting there for hours until somebody actually walks in. So my goal was to always be appointment only and I'm really thankful to be at this point, but it has taken years to get to. Now, after you've done your apprenticeship, you've been doing and walk-ins for a while, you moved on to being appointment only, you could either stay working for your mentor at the shop that you started at. If things aren't working out there, you can take your portfolio and start shopping around the different shops. Or you can open up your own shop. Now, opening up your own shop is a whole nother adventure in its own because not only are you the artist and you have to market for yourself, but now you have all this back-end business stuff that you've never learned about probably. And you have to figure all that out also on top of everything else you need to do. I've had my own shop for three years now. And I will say that the first like six months was really a lot to take in. I really like to be challenged when it comes to my work. So it was a really exciting time, but owning a shop is definitely not for everybody. You can make a good living working for somebody else and there's nothing wrong with that. So it really all depends on what you truly wanna do with your tattooing career. Do you wanna do walk-ins? Do you wanna be appointment only? Do you wanna own a shop? Do you wanna tattoo yourself in your mom's basement for the rest of your life? What are your goals? So at the end of the day, like I've said multiple times in this video, it is all up to you and how far you make it in tattooing, even in how far you make it in life. It's all up to you and your effort. So I hope that this video was helpful. I am really tired today, so I hope all of that came out and made sense. I guess I'll find out when I'm editing, but I hope that this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below, and I hope you have a good day.